come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I'm afraid the chairs aren't very comfortable, but that doesn't matter because in just a moment, you'll be sitting on the edge of them. For we'll be bringing you the tale of the thing inside. A strange and potent force sealed up and held in check that cried to be released. And once it was freed, brought terror and death to a whole countryside. Sergeant, what's this all about? Has there been any trouble over at Ezra's place? I guess you could call it trouble, Mrs. Farrar. He was killed last night. He was what? Killed. Murdered. His nephew went over there early this morning and found him. Oh, but that's awful. I thought he was a dreadful man, but... Well, have you any idea who did it? Not yet. That's why I stopped by here to find out if you'd seen or heard anything. Oh, I'm sorry. I wish we could help you, but... Well, how was he killed? It was pretty bad. Whoever did it must have really hated him or else been out of his mind. Because it was done with an axe. Our mystery drama, The Thing Inside, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Robert Newman and stars Ralph Bell and Bryna Rayburn. What is evil? Is it abstract or concrete? Does it seek us out or do we seek it? Either way, there is something in all of us that senses its presence. And when we do, most of us draw back from it in fear. But occasionally, for reasons we do not always understand, we are attracted to it and come under its spell. Thus, freeing it to work its destruction on an unsuspecting world. Our story begins as John and Sarah Farrar get out of their car and walk towards a rather shabby and run-down antique shop in a small New England village. It's not much of a place. No. Still, you never know. Paul's picked up some pretty nice things in places like this. That tavern sign, for instance. <laughs> That's true. Good afternoon. Oh, oh, good afternoon. Do you mind if we look around? Nope, not at all. You looking for anything in particular? Oh, no, not really. Possibly some dishes. Uh, do you have any white iron stew? Nope, I'm afraid not. Oh, it doesn't matter. That's a rather nice painting there. A schooner? Yes, it is. Oh. Well, do you know anything about it? No, except that it's American, early 19th century. John, look at this. What? Oh, yes. Did you say early 19th century? Yeah. I don't think so. I'd say it was, wasn't was more than 20 years old, a copy of something earlier. Why do you say that? Because of the condition of the canvas and uh, the varnish. You a dealer? No, I'm a painter. Oh, well, you may be right. Well, I'm sure I am. Oh, hello. Oh, have you found something? Yes. Hmm. Can you uh, tell us anything about this? Oh, a glass paperweight? Oh, is that what it is? Yep. Yeah, at least I think so. What do you think of it, Sarah? No, it's, it's interesting. Yes, it is. Especially when you hold it up to the light. When you turn the ball, it, uh, it moves. I've never seen anything quite like it. Neither have I. Paul would probably know what it is. Oh, never mind. How much do you want for it? Five dollars. What do you say, Sarah? Shall we buy it? Oh, I don't know, John. It just looks like a glass ball to me. Well, I like it. I like looking at it. Yes, but... Five dollars for something that may be nothing at all. Well, why do you say it's nothing when I say I like it? Well, because five dollars is a lot of money. For us, anyway. You don't have to rub it in. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I just meant I know it. what you meant. If you really want it, you can have it for three dollars. I do want it. I'll take it. John. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> Hello? 
Anybody home? Is that you, Paul? Yes. I'll be right down. Hi. Hello, Sarah. Well, what's all this? Oh, my brother sent me a case of fruit from Florida, and I thought you and John might like some. <laughs> That's awfully nice of you, Paul. No, not really. <laughs> I'd never finish it all by myself. Well, I still think it's very nice of you. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Where's John? In the studio. Oh, how is he? Oh, about the same. Not not very good. <sighs> still not working, huh? No. He's trying. He... He goes in there every day. Well, but... it's happened to almost every painter at some time or another. You hit a bad period, just can't seem to do anything. Paul! Paul! I thought I heard your voice. How are you? Fine, John. And you? Okay. Where'd all this fruit come from? Paul brought it over. My brother sent me a whole case of it, and I thought you might like some. Oh, uh-huh. it's very nice of you. I was hoping you'd stop by. There's something I wanted to show you, ask you about. Oh, what's that? This glass ball. Oh, where'd you get it? In a crummy little antique shop in Preston. Oh, yes, I know the place. The guy said it was a paperweight. No, it can't be. It uh, doesn't have a base. It isn't even flat on one side. Well, that's what I thought. What do you think it is, then? Yeah, I have no idea. The only thing I've ever seen that's even vaguely like this are witch balls. Witch balls? Yeah, you sometimes find them down in Pennsylvania. They're uh, like hex signs, supposed to keep witches away. Oh, yes. It's a very interesting thing. Beautiful piece of glass blowing. Yes, isn't it? Take it over the light and look at it more closely. There's uh, something inside it. Kind of shadow. Oh? I don't see anything. Well, hold it up. Turn it. Oh, you mean that... Kind of a swirl? Mm -hmm. I think that's just an air bubble or maybe an imperfection in the glass. I don't. I think there's something inside it that the glass was blown around it. Here, give it to me. Oh, John! It slipped out of my hands. It it didn't break. It it, did it crack? No. Look at that. Dropped on the fireplace, and there's not a mark or a scratch on it. Well, that's impossible. Well, look at it. Oh, you're right. I've never seen anything like it. It it can't be ordinary glass. I'll tell you what, John. I've got a friend who's an expert. Collects paperweights. If you like, I'll take it and show it to you. No, no. It's not leaving this house. John! Well, I just thought... I say it's not leaving this house. All right, John. I'm going back inside. I'll see you, Paul. Uh, yes, John. Well, uh, he really has a thing about it, hasn't he? Yes. When did he get it? Oh, just yesterday. I don't like it. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I, I just have a funny feeling about it. I have had from the first time I saw it. <laughs> Oh, 
Hello, Paul. Sarah, can I come in for a few minutes? Oh, yes, of course. Well, how are you? A little down at the moment. Why? I just got some rather upsetting news. That's why I came over. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. What's the news? Well, it'll affect you and John more than it does anyone else. Hmm? You know those rumors that Ezra Tate was going to sell that 200-acre parcel of his to a developer? Well, apparently they're true. Oh, no. But how, how do you know? Well, I was just at the bank and Peterson told me. Well, that's certainly not good. That Ezra is going to sell. But that doesn't mean that they can go ahead and build there. Well, they'd have to get the approval of the zoning board. Have you forgotten that Harry Walker, the board chairman, is his nephew? Yeah, but he wouldn't dare. You, you mean you think it really may go through? I'm afraid so. Oh, but that's awful. You know, we bought this place, put every cent we have into it, mostly because of the location and the view. And if the deal does go through, that will be the end of it. I know. And that's not all. But I... I wouldn't want to go on living here with a development right under our noses. And I don't think anyone else would want to either. Well, I'm afraid you'd take a bad licking if you tried to sell the place. Well, don't say anything about it to John until we really do know what's going to happen. He hates Ezra Tate as it is, and when he hears about this... That's he... right. He has had a bit of trouble with him, hasn't he? Oh, from the day we moved in here. First about the boundary line, and then about... Sarah! Oh, you... oh. oh. Hello. I didn't know you were here. I was just passing by, and I thought I'd drop in. Well, I'm glad you did. As a matter of fact, I was going to call you. Oh, by what? You know that glass board I showed you yesterday? Well, yes, of course. If you wanted to break it, really break it, how'd you go about it? <laughs> well, why on earth would you want to break it? It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Well, yes, it is. Uh, but suppose I did want to break it. I really don't know, John. Can you think of any way it can be done with fire and water? Fire and water? Yes. Well, um, I suppose if you put it in a fire and got it very hot, or close to its melting point, and then dropped it into cold water, that might do it. Of course. Thanks, Paul. John, wait. You mean you're really going to... Yes. Why? Because I've got to. I got a feeling that if I do break it, can break it up. What? Never mind. I'll see you, Paul. Don't look that way, Sarah. I know it doesn't make sense, but uh, after all, there's no harm in it. I'm not so sure about that. Why do you say that? I told you. I I had a funny feeling about the thing from the first time I saw it. Well, if he does break it, destroy it, that will be the end of it. I wonder. John? Yes? Why have you got the door locked? I didn't realize I had. Hi. Oh, may I come in? Of course. Oh, it's, it's awfully hot in here. I know, it's the fire. Oh, yes. Then, then you're really going to do it? Yes. I've had the ball on the fire for about a half hour now. I'm just about to take it out. Darling, I don't like this. I know you don't. What'd I do with the tongs? Uh, over there. Oh, yes. Now... Stand back. Mm. I'm going to take it out. And then drop it in the pail of water? Yes. Uh, come on now. Uh, uh, there we are. Oh, darling, be careful. I will. You ready? Yes. Here goes. Wow. I really think I did it. What happened to the ball? We'll see for yourself. It practically exploded into a hundred pieces. Oh, yes. Well, are you satisfied now? Yes. Now, wait a minute. 
Uh, Look at this. This is what was inside it. It's center. Uh, another ball. A small black one. Yes, but it wasn't black before. Oh, the heat must have turned it black. Well, what are you going to do with it? Keep it. Why? Just so. Oh. Now stop looking so upset, Sarah. Things are going to be different now. What do you mean? Well, you'll see. Everything's going to be fine. Better than they've ever been before. With the help of fire and water, the mysterious glass ball has been broken. And though he should know better, John Farrar seems pleased about it. For there are some things that it is best to leave alone. Was he right in thinking there was something sealed in the ball? Will it give him the things he wants? And if so, at what cost? Dusk is a time of uncertainty. And though she could not have said why, Sarah Farrar was not just uncertain, but anxious, as she stood beside her husband and saw the glass ball shatter. But now she's beginning to feel that perhaps she was mistaken. For when John woke this morning, he was in better spirits than he has been for months. He went into his studio early and has been in there all day. It's evening now, almost supper time. And he still has not come out. Yes? Darling, it's almost six o'clock, and I wondered you... It's what? Almost six o'clock. You're kidding. It can't be. But it is. Oh, good Lord. I had no idea. I kept thinking while I had it, I'd stay with it. Keep on going for just a little while longer. You mean... You mean you've been working? Have I ever? Oh, oh can I look? Of course. It's not quite finished. I want to do a little more with the background, but, uh, what do you think? Oh, oh darling, it's good. It's, it's terribly good. You really think so? Oh, yes. It, it's the best thing you've ever done. In some ways, like summer morning, but different, stronger. You're right. It is something like summer morning, and it is different, <laughs> but, uh... Well, it would have to be, because I'm suddenly seeing everything differently. Feeling differently. It's as if I'd been handcuffed for months and I was suddenly free. Oh, oh darling, I'm so glad. Oh, six o'clock, no wonder I'm starving. But didn't you have any lunch? I, I went out around noon. Oh, no, no, I forgot about it. What's the supper? Oh, beef stew. Oh, good. And wine? Well, there's that bottle we were saving for a special occasion. I think this is it, don't you? Oh, I certainly do. Oh, darling, why don't you wash up and... Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Sarah. Oh, Paul, hello. Well, you sound pretty good. Oh, I feel that way. John finally broke through and he's working. Working beautifully. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Oh, you don't sound so good. Is anything wrong? I'm afraid so. I just heard that the deal on Ezra Tate's land is definitely going through. The closing's tomorrow. Oh, no. And there's no way of stopping it? None that I know of. Oh, then I guess I'll have to tell John. Tell me what? Are you going to do it now? Yes. I'm sorry, Sarah. So am I, but it can't be helped. Goodbye, Paul. <coughs> What was that all about? Oh, some, some rather bad news. Darling, you know that talk that Ezra Tate was going to sell the 200 acres across the road to a developer? Yes. Well, apparently it's true. What? It can't be. I'm afraid it is, John. The closing's tomorrow. But he can't do anything like that. It, it'd ruin the town. And not just the town. We, we, we couldn't go on living here with a couple of hundred ticky-tacky houses right across the road. I know. But I'm afraid nothing can be done about it. No? 
Well, we'll see about that. John, where are you going? To talk to him. No, John, wait. Don't. Wait. Ezra. Ezra Tate. Who's there? Who's there? John Farrar. What do you want? I want to talk to you. Well, you can't right now. I'm in supper. Now, damn it all, Ezra. It's important. Okay. Okay, just a second. Hmm. Now, what is all this? Is what I heard true? That you're selling the land across the road from us to a developer? It sure is. But you can't do that. <laughs> Says who? It's my land. I can sell it to anyone I want. Haven't you any feeling at all for anyone else? Don't you realize what it'll do? Not just to me, my place, but the whole town. It can't take another couple of hundred people. The deal's set, and that's that. But can't you see? Okay. Okay, how much are they offering you for it? Why do you want to know? Because I'll buy it from you. I'll give you a couple of thousand over their price. What? (laughs) That's really funny. What's funny about it? Yeah, it just is. You haven't got a dime. You owe everyone in town money, and you want to buy... Never mind about that. I'll get it somewhere. Yeah. Where? From your friend Paul Chandler. What's the deal where I get it? Well, I'd like to know, that's all. Just because he's got a thing about your wife comes around with fruit and groceries for you, well, I imagine... You old... You keep away from me, Farrar! You think I'd let you in here without precautions? This gun's loaded. Come any closer and I'll let you have a load of bird shots. For two cents... Two I... cents is just about what you can afford. Now you get out of here! Okay. But this isn't the end of it, Ezra. Oh, John, thank heaven you're back. I was afraid. Well, what happened? He laughed at me. Oh, you should have known he would. He's a dreadful old man. He's a monster. He doesn't give a damn about anyone or anything. I'd like to see him drop dead. John! Well, I would. Well, just dropping dead would be too good for him. I'd like to have something really terrible happen to him. Just a second. Uh, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Farrar? Yes? My name's Osborne, uh, Sergeant Osborne, State Police. Oh, how, how do you do? Is your husband around? Yes, he, he's in his studio. Uh, could I talk to him for a few minutes? Well, he's working, but I think so. Uh, come in. Thank you. Yes? John, could you come out here for a minute? Okay. What's up? Oh, darling, this is Sergeant Osborne of the State Police. Oh. Good morning, Sergeant. Uh, good morning, Mr. Farrar. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I wondered if you could help us. With what, Sergeant? Uh, were you home last night? Yes, we were. We're here most nights. What time did you get to bed? Fairly early. About ten. Yes, that's right. And did you get up for any reason, or did you sleep right through the night? Well, we slept straight through. At least I did. What? I was hoping that maybe you'd gotten up. That you could tell me if you heard or saw anything unusual. A car going up the road to Ezra Tate's place, for instance. Well, I didn't. Did you, Sarah? No. We'd had a big day and I slept like a log. You know Tate, don't you? Yeah, we sure do. I take it you don't like him very much. Well, that's the understatement of the year. We've had nothing but trouble with him since we moved up here. Sergeant, what's this all about? Has there been any trouble at his place? I guess you could call it trouble. He was killed last night. He was what? Killed. Murdered. His nephew went over there early this morning and found him. Oh, but that's awful. I thought he was a dreadful man, but... Have you any idea who did it? Not yet. 
That's why I stopped by here to find out if you'd seen or heard anything. Well, I'm sorry. I wish we could help you, but... Well, how was he killed? It was pretty bad. Whoever did it must have really hated him or else been out of his mind. Because he was done with an axe. <laughs> No, that's not a nice way to kill someone, not at all. And whoever or whatever did it didn't waste very much time. For it was only last night that John Farrar said, I'd like to see something really terrible happen to him. And what did happen was horrible enough to shock even him. The question is, was it a coincidence or is there more to it than that? Could it have something to do with the shattering of the glass ball? There is a finality to death. Even the death of the unloved and unmourned that we all find sobering. For it reminds us of our own mortality. It's late afternoon now and Sarah Farrar is in the kitchen of the old farmhouse when a car drives up, stops outside. She goes to the door, opens it. Oh. Hello, Paul. Hello, Sarah. How are you? Well, I've been better. I gather you heard the news then. About Ezra? Yes. Who'd you hear it from? The state police. One of them stopped by this morning. He wanted to know whether John or I had heard or seen anything last night. And had you? No. We were both pretty tired. John had been working like a maniac all day, and we slept right through. I see. How's John? Well, of course, he's upset. It, it, it's a scary thing when something like that happens so close by, and you don't know who did it or why. But he'll get up with it. I hope so. I've been worried about him. Why? Well, he certainly wasn't in very good shape the other day. That whole involvement of his with that glass ball. Oh, that... I was pretty worried about that myself, but, well, once he broke it and snapped his painting block, he started working. Well, he really feels there was some connection there. Apparently. Well, as long as he's working, I take it he still is. Oh, yes. You see, he finished one painting, and he's already started on another. Oh, good. Uh, the reason I stopped by was because I wanted to find out if uh, the two of you were free Friday night. Oh, yes, we are. Then would you come over for dinner? Benson of the Benson Gallery is coming up from New York. And if John is working again, I thought he ought to meet him. Oh, Paul, you really are a very good friend. Oh, come on, Sarah. Now, you know how I feel about you, both of you. You've had a pretty rough time since you moved up here, and if I've done anything to help... Paul, Paul, hello. Hi. I didn't hear you cry. You been here long? No, just a few minutes. Oh, Paul stopped by to invite us over for dinner Friday night. Benson of the Benson Gallery is going to be there. Oh, that's nice. What do you think of our uh, big local news? Ezra Tate's death? That's pretty shocking. Yes, it is. On the other hand, it did take care of a pretty serious problem for us. Oh, what do you mean? Well, now that he's gone, that's the end of that housing development. Well, I'm afraid it isn't, John. Well, why not? His nephew is his only living relative. He'll inherit everything Ezra had, including his land. And he's already telling people he intends to go through with the deal. What? Well, he can't do that. He's head of the town zoning board. Yes, he is. But he was willing to push the thing through when it meant money in his uncle's pocket. Don't you think he'll be even more anxious to do it when it means money in his own? But that's even worse. Well, a little more direct and obvious, but no worse. And nothing can be done about us? I'm afraid not. The zoning board is his baby. Does just what he says. Wow. Well, it would serve him right if the same thing happened to him that happened to Ezra. John! That's a terrible thing to say. Is it? I don't like violence any more than you do, Sarah. But when a man is willing to destroy a whole community out of sheer greed, I say the world's better off without him. <laughs> John? John? Oh, 
you are in here. Oh, yes, of course I am. Why? Well, I, I couldn't imagine what had happened to you. You said you were going into work for just a half hour or That's so. That's right. What time is well, it? It's almost 11. It's not. Yes, it is. I must have fallen asleep again. I worked for a while and started feeling tired and sat down here. Well, you've really been at it these last few days. Ah, I guess I have. John, why are you keeping this thing here? What thing? This black thing that was in the center of the glass bowl. Well, I told you I was going to keep it. But why? Because I like it. I like looking at it. What? Was that what you were doing before you fell asleep? Yes. Oh, I wish you wouldn't. I I wish you'd get rid of it. Oh, don't be silly, Sarah. The day I found the ball, or rather the day I broke it open, was one of the most important days of my life. Hasn't everything been different since then? Well, if you mean you've been working, working well, yes, but I... But what? Oh, never mind. Uh, are you coming up to bed now? I guess so. Just let me clean my brushes and put them away. Well, who on earth is that? I have no idea. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Sarah. Did I wake you? No, Paul. I was upstairs reading. I just came down to see what was keeping John. Is he there with you? No, oh, he's in the studio. Why? Well, I wasn't sure whether I should call or not, but I finally decided I would. Sarah, I've got some more news that's just as shocking as the last. Harry Walker was killed tonight. What? Where? And how? In his home. His wife was out, came back, and found him dead in the kitchen. Oh, no. And, and they don't know who did it? Not any more than they do who killed Ezra. <laughs> Good morning, darling. I I couldn't decide whether to wake you or let you sleep. Oh, I haven't been asleep for some time. I'm just lying there thinking. I know, but I, I thought you might doze off. You didn't sleep much last night. No. Well, how, how about some breakfast? I don't want any. John, you, you should eat something. I can't. I feel awful. Because of what you said when Paul was here about... How Harry Walker deserved to die, too? Partly. Well, you shouldn't. All right, it was a horrible thing to say, but you were angry, upset. Yes, I was, but uh, don't you realize that the same thing happened before with Ezra? I said I hoped something terrible would happen to him, and it did. Yes, it did, but we often say things we don't really mean. But I did mean it. I meant it both times. That's what makes it so frightening. Why frightening? Look, you don't think that just saying it had anything to do with their deaths, do you? Yes, I do. John! Well, I do. Do you remember what I told you about the glass ball? That, that there was something in it? Yes. What if there was? And what if, when I released it... It began doing things for me in return. Oh, John, that's ridiculous. It was just a glass ball. Was it? I told you that I had to break it, that it was very important. And it was right after I did that I started working again. Yeah, but that could have happened anyway. Maybe. But then twice after that, when I said I hoped something would happen to someone... It did. That was just a coincidence. When the same thing happens twice in the same way, it's not a coincidence. Oh. But that's not the worst of it. What if the same thing happens still again? Oh, John. John, that's insane. Things don't happen just because we want them to. There's no connection between what happened to either Ezra or Harry Walker. And even if there were, how could the same thing happen again? You, you, you... Don't feel the same way about anyone else. Don't I? Who? Oh. You've no idea? No. We don't know that many people up here. And... You... you don't mean Paul. Yes. Oh. Good old Paul. 
who's always doing things for us. Only it hasn't been for us. It's been for you. Oh. He's in love with you, isn't he? Oh, John. John, this is terrible. I, I've been concerned about you, worried about you for some time, but I, I never realized you really are sick. Are you saying it's not true? Of course it's not true. He's just a friend, a, a good friend. I wish I could believe you. Meaning you don't? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. But there's nothing to think about. I tell you, John, where are you going? I'll... John, wait a minute. You can't. John! Hello? Oh, Paul, it's me again. Any sign of him? No, sir. But it's been over two hours. Well, you said he didn't take the car. If he walked, it would take him some time to get over here. Not this long, Paul. I'm scared. I, I told you what he said. I know. But I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. The longer he has to think about, the more chance there is that he'll realize it's ridiculous. But suppose it's just the opposite. Suppose Now, you... don't do that, Sarah. I'm not worried. I hope he does come here. I told you there's something I want to tell him. Oh. I don't want to go into it now, but I think it may make a difference. Help him. All right. But if he does come to your place, would you call me? Let me know. Of course, Sarah. Oh. Thank you, Paul. Just a good friend. Can I believe her? He's been there all the time whenever we needed him. No, not just when we needed him. Whenever he could do anything to help. Why? There's only one way to find out. Hello, John. I've been expecting you. Have you? Yes. Sarah called. Twice, as a matter of fact. And said you might be coming over here. Come on in. Thanks. Can I get you something? Some uh, coffee or a drink? No. Well, sit down. There's something I want to tell you. About you and Sarah? What? What could I tell you about that? How you feel about her? I feel the same way about her that I do about you. I like you both very much. What I wanted to talk to you about was that glass ball. What about it? Well, I'm afraid I was the one who got you started on it, saying it was something like a Pennsylvania Dutch witch ball. Well, I was wrong. There was nothing strange or mysterious about it. It, it wasn't even old. It was made seven or eight years ago by the New England Glass Company. That's impossible. How do you know that? Because I called a friend of mine, the man I wanted to show it to, and he told me. The company was trying to develop a new kind of glass, practically unbreakable and impervious to heat. They did it by bonding two kinds of glass together, and the ball was one of their samples. That's not true. It's a lie. You don't just want to take Sarah away from me. You want to take that away, too. The feeling that breaking it just gave me, the freedom, the sense of power. When you're not going to... John, put down that poker. Now. John, John, put it down. I'm not finished yet. I, I'm not denying that something happened to you after you bought it, but I think I can explain that, too. Now, look, when you brought it home, you used to sit and stare into it, didn't you? Yes. Well, don't you see what could have happened? When you stare into something clear or shiny, you can hypnotize yourself. But in, in your case, the, the self-hypnosis took a special form. You started identifying with it. And when you finally broke it, you you released something. Not in the ball, but in yourself. Released what? Lies. Everything you've been saying has been a lie. It hasn't, John. I, it, it's been the truth, John. The, 
Keep away from me. No, I came over here to find something out, and I have. You're no friend of mine. You never were. Who's that? I don't know. Well, don't open the door. John, now stop that. Whoever it is must know we're here. I've got to. Paul, I'm warning you. Mr. Chandler? Yes? I'm Osborne, state police. Is Mr. Farrar... Oh, yes, yes, I see he is. Uh, good morning, Mr. Farrar. Your wife said she thought you might be here. My wife? Yes, we stopped by at your place first. Uh, Mr. Farrar, would you come with me? Where? To headquarters. We'd like to talk to you. About what? Several things, but mostly about where you were last night, about 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? But that was... That was what? About when Harry Walker was murdered. How do you know that? Because Paul called us shortly after that and told us. You're all against me. Not just my wife and Paul, but everyone. Plotting against me. No one's against you, Mr. Farrar, and we're certainly not plotting against you. We just want to talk to you and... No, and... no, no! Farrar, stop! Come back here, Farrar! Oh, aren't you going after him? Oh, we'll catch up to him. I have another car and two more men out on the road there, just around the curve. Why did you want to talk to him? Well, someone saw him leaving Harry Walker's house last night, shortly before Mrs. Walker came home. Oh. We just got a general description. weren't sure who it was at first, but... Farrar, look out! That truck! John! find. John Farrar came to his friend's house seeking what? The truth, he tried to tell himself. But the truth was exactly what he did not want to hear. Not when it stripped away his illusions and did not confirm his jealous imaginings. And so he found what we find so often when we reject the truth and everything else of value. Death. Now we see through a glass darkly, says the Bible. That was what John Farrar was doing, seeing something in the strange glass ball that wasn't there. But he wasn't completely wrong. At least it wasn't all imaginary. For as his friend Paul said, there was a thing inside. Not inside the glass ball, but inside John himself that never should have been tampered with. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Reiner Rayburn, Bob Caliban, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Furnished by the CBS Radio Network.